In this video, I am trying injection molding with silicon, right here at home. It all started when the humidifier broke. Normally, you fill it with water and then hang it to the radiator with its hook. Well, the hook is no more. So we started putting a bowl on top of the radiator to get air humid. But it's only a matter of time before someone knocks it down and breaks it. Normally, it's an easy fix, but I have a 3D printer and I have to use it and make it much harder for myself, aren't I? Especially this time, since I only have PLA filament and they're not so good with heat. So I decided to cover the 3D printed parts with silicon, but not even the silicon that's suitable for this. I'm using silicon caulk, so it will be a warm, soft silicon outside and hard, cold plastic inside kind of deal. I do have a problem, I need a mold to pour silicon in, but I never designed one and I don't actually know how I should. So I looked online, I did my research and found a couple of ticks of tricks. Starting with the air problem, before the silicon, the mold is filled with air. And if there is no way for the silicon to escape, silicon can't replace it and there will be holes on the end product. It's like squeezing a syringe and covering the tip at the same time. But if there is holes for the air to escape, silicon can push the air out and fill the mold all the way through. Also, the viscosity of the liquid is important. If it's thick like honey, it will be much harder for it to reach the corners. So it's best to keep the edges rounded. If the corner is crucial, you might have to change the material. Another thing to consider is how will the mold separate. The part you are producing can prevent the mold from opening after it hardens. But the same part might just work fine with another mold design. Also, the way your material hardens might create problems. For example, the silicon caulk I'm using needs oxygen from the air to harden. So if the inner void of the mold is too weak, it might never harden inside. The path that the material follows is also important. It might never reach the parts of the mold that's far from the entrance, especially if there are air vents that prevent pressure from building up. Okay then, I feel like I know enough now to give it a try. So I will design a hook that will be silicon outside and hard plastic inside and hopefully the silicone will be thick enough to insulate it from the heat. I'm starting with the silicon part of the hook, basically the final shape. Then I design a part that I will use to attach the hook to the humidifier. After that I use the silicon part and make it smaller to get the inner plastic skeleton. Okay, the plastic part itself is ready. Let's design the mold now. I start by making a box that covers the piece. Then I remove the silicon part from the box, leaving a void. Then I split the box in half and make holes for the clamping screws. And also for attaching the inner skeleton to the mold. I also make grooves for an o-ring to fit in, so it doesn't leak from the hole for the inner skeleton. And finally I put two holes for the injection and couple for the air to escape. Here you can see all of that with cross-section view. And this is how it will all come together. For the print, I use the lowest layer heights that I can. This way it takes longer, but I'm hoping the silicon will be easier to remove from a smoother mold. Okay, the print is done. Let's see how the parts turned out. We can try it out now. I start by putting the screws into the mold. I put a lot of screw holes, since I'll be hand tightening them, but probably this was a little overkill. Next, I'm oiling the mold to prevent silicon from sticking to it. It's important that I don't leave any spots. After all, we don't want to glue the two parts of the mold together. Then I put an o-ring on the skeleton and mount it to the mold. I can now align both sides, close the mold and tighten the screws. Here comes the messy part. I'm trying to suck the silicon with the syringe, but it's a bit too difficult. So I load it from its back and closing it back up without trapping too much air. Finally, it's injection time. I'm filling the mold until silicon comes out of every air vent. Then I clean it and leave it to cure. I left it for a day. It should be cured, but there's still a smell of vinegar. That means the reaction continues. These silicon caulks produce an acid when curing, hence the smell. It shouldn't smell if it's fully cured, but it might never be fully cured. After all, it needs air to do that. FDM printed plastics are not airtight, but it still may prevent the silicon from fully curing. Let's crack it open. I wonder if the oil did its job, or we just have two pieces stuck together completely. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have worked. There are pre-made mold release agents out there, but I'm not sure they would work either. There are made for two parts silicons used for molds, not caulk. Never seen anyone injecting caulk. I'm trying my best to open it, but it's stuck together too well. Finally, I managed to open it, but half of it is stuck on the mold. Yeah, this definitely wasn't the result I'm looking for. I want to do a little experiment to find something that prevents the caulk from sticking. So I printed this to test on. I find online that rubbing alcohol and dish soap mixture works well. So to test it, first I'm putting caulk directly, then with oil and finally with the new mixture. I'm testing with oil again, since if it works here, but not in the mold as we've seen, I can't confidently say that the dish soap mixture will work in the mold even if it works here. I waited for the caulk to fully cure. Let's see the dish soap first. It works great, really easy to separate. I will check just the caulk next. As expected, it's stuck on there really well. Okay, finally, the oil. It's not stuck, but it's definitely worse than the dish soap. But the difference is not great as I was hoping to see. 
I'm guessing the low surface tension of the dish soap mixture allows it to cover everything, but the oil, due to its high surface tension, clumps up a bit, allowing silicon to touch the plastic and stick to it. I will try caulk again, but I'm not fully confident, so I'm also ordering two parts silicon. It's a lot less sticky, also I never use that stuff, and I'm curious. This time I'm sanding the inner skeleton, so hopefully the caulk will stick better to it. Then I'm putting its rubber on again, and covering all the mold with dish soap. Then I fix it to its place and cover the top as well. Let's close it and tighten the screws. I'm filling the syringe with caulk and injecting it until it comes out of all the air vents. In production, robots use a tested fixed amount of material every time, but I don't have that accuracy, so I'm wasting quite a bit of material. Then I wipe it clean and leave it to cure. This time it's been a little less than 12 hours, but I'm bored so let's see if it worked. I'm removing the screws and using a screwdriver to pry it open. This time for sure it opens easier, but it's still stuck on the mold and it gives off strong acid smell. Unfortunately it's not as good as I want it to be. I feel like if I waited a little longer it could have been better. I still think this is doable with silicon caulk, but the fact that it's so sticky and needs air to harden makes it much harder to use. Two part silicons that's used to make molds is much less sticky and most importantly it cures by mixing two parts together. It doesn't need air, it can cure easily inside the mold. I never worked with it before and it recommends testing to find the correct mixing ratio. So I hot glue the chest pins inside this cup and will use it for the test. I didn't want to use this type of silicon from the start, since silicon caulk is cheaper, available everywhere and it doesn't require a precision scale. I had to buy it as well. I'm pouring it on the night and it's quite satisfying to watch. I haven't made enough to cover it all the way, but it's okay. I don't intend to use this mold anyways. Let's see if it cured properly. I will break the cup open. It didn't stick to the cup at all. It's easy to remove the chest piece as well. I'm satisfied with the result. Let's test it with the 3D printed mold. I'm measuring the silicon and mixing it. Then I pour it into the syringe, hopefully for the last time for a while. I assembled the mold already, so let's fill it. The viscosity is quite less compared to the caulk, so it flows much easier. Again, I'm filling it until it pours out of all the air vents. Then wiping it clean and leaving it to rest. It's the next day, let's open it up. We have not one, but two molds to open thanks to the camera magic. Off camera, I made another one with caulk. But the mold is not good. The bed level of my printer was too high, so the first layer was too close to the bed, widening it and closing the air vents. It's easy to reopen them with a needle, but I wanted to show what will happen if there are no air vents. And as expected, the caulk couldn't flow to the ends of the hook in the mold, since it couldn't replace the air. Besides that, it came out alright, since it had more than 24 hours to cure. Even these air vent strings came out. Silicon caulk can definitely work, but I don't recommend it, it's just not worth the extra effort. Let's see how the other one did, I don't need any tools to open this one. Ok, that's a good start, it looks great. It's easily separated from the other side as well. All the silicon in the air vents came out, it's impressive how much detail it can capture. The printing lines also shows. The o-ring is easy to remove as well. Look how the printing lines catch the light. You might have forgot by now, but we started this journey to fix a humidifier. So let's fix it, I'm putting these nuts to their slots. Then I screw the hook to its place. That's a perfect fit. Let's see how it will fit to the radiator. I didn't even clean the extra silicon from the injection hole, it also fits to the radiator. With this new method, I can now make a lot of things at home that I couldn't before. Yeah, there are flexible filaments and there are printers that can print multiple filaments at once, but these filaments need to be meltable, so they can't endure much heat. And generally, these printers are a lot more expensive, and also they waste a lot of material when changing filaments. With silicon, I can now make watertight seals in any shape. Also, it can be used to dampen vibrations or peak loads for an actuator, like a motor coupling. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you want to support even more, you can now click the join button below to do it. But when you click the button, there will be a video playing and please watch that video all the way before joining. Because I have some concerns about the YouTube's membership system and I talk about them in that video. If you have any suggestions about this video or if you have any project ideas, you can tell me about them in the comment section. Your feedback is highly appreciated. Also, while you are there, please subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye.